Well, hello, welcome to a tutorial on how to install and set up FunWave on a Windows 10 Plus device or a Linux device. Um, please note that this tutorial will not easily apply to anyone who is on a Mac OS device. Uh, this is because some of the installation procedures for some of the dependencies uh, might be different. Uh, for Mac OS users, please refer to the official documentation for FunWave on instructions on installation. Now, this tutorial will be split up into several parts. The first part being how to uh, enable Windows Subsystem for Linux for Windows users. This will allow you to install a Linux distribution onto your Windows uh, device and will allow you to actually install the dependencies and run FunWave as intended. The second part of this tutorial is installing said dependencies. And the third part of the tutorial is installing FunWave and running a simple case to ensure that everything has been set up correctly. Okay, so let's get into the first part of this tutorial. To enable Windows Subsystem for Linux, or WSL, we first need to go into the control panel. So right here, by using the search function, I'll look for the control panel. And you want to go under Programs. From the Programs uh, category, you want to look for Turn Windows Features On or Off under Programs and Features. And we're looking for two features to turn on. The first will be the Virtual Machine Platform. And the second will be Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now, I am on a Windows 11 de uh, device. So I do need those two features on. If you're on a Windows 10 device, you may not need to have Virtual Machine Platform on, but I would double check the documentation for WSL just to make sure that the version of Windows that you're on needs this feature on or off. Okay, so in order to install a distribution of Linux, you can head over to your terminal. And over here, I want to ensure my Windows Subsystem for Linux program or WSL program is updated correctly. So I will do run this command to make sure everything is up. Oh, sorry, I will run this command to make sure everything is up to date. Now I can go ahead and run this command to install a version of Ubuntu. In my case, I, I will have already installed it, so it will launch it for me. If you have not installed Ubuntu before, then uh, WSL will prompt you to create a new Unix account, and you can enter whichever credentials that you want. Okay, now we need to go ahead and install the necessary dependencies for running FunWave. Now I have a list of commands that we will need to run in our Linux terminal or distribution in order to run FunWave. If you're on a Windows computer, you may need to go into your terminal or PowerShell instance and type in bash to bring up the Linux terminal. Okay, from here, you'll want to run these commands in order. Please take a moment to take note of all of these commands. The first two will make sure your package and package manager um, is up to date. That way, when you install the proper packages for FunWave, uh, nothing will conflict. And from here, you'll want to install these four packages. The first will allow you to compile FunWave using make files. These two will help you compile uh, FunWave, and the last will allow you to run it in uh, FunWave in parallel. So just to show you what that might look like, if I want to install make onto my Linux terminal, I would want to run this command, authenticate my uh, access, and mine is already up to date. But if you have an out-of-date or you don't have it installed yet, 
then it will go ahead and install all of the necessary files for you. Now once you have run all of these commands in order and everything has been installed properly, we can move on to actually installing FunWave from GitHub and running a simple case. Okay, so now we can move on to the third part of the tutorial, which is installing FunWave and running a simple case. So I'm just going to enter my Linux terminal here. And the first thing we need to do is install FunWave or download the source code uh, from the GitHub. So I have the GitHub right here, right? Uh, you can see the link to the GitHub. This will be available in the official documentation, um, but you can also just simply use this link to access all of the code. Now, what I recommend is using the latest release of FunWave. This ensures that you are not working with any sort of beta version of FunWave. Uh, hence, it may be unstable because it's beta. But if you're not so worried about that, you can go ahead and clone the, the repository directly for the most up-to-date code. Okay. So as you can see, I've already downloaded version 3.6 of FunWave and uh, unzipped it and put it on my desktop over here. We can take a quick look into the folder and see that there are a lot of things here, but we can see that the source code for FunWave is here. We can see a lot of the compilation code is right here, but we can ignore this for now and focus on the simple cases folder. This will contain uh, pre-set up uh, uh, models or cases that we can use to test um, whether or not FunWave is working correctly on our computer. Okay, so let's do that. As you can see, I'm in my Linux terminal. And there are several, if you're not familiar with navigating around a Linux terminal, that is okay. Um, all you need to know is how to navigate to different folders. So right here is the current, it is folder or working directory that I'm in right now. And that if you were to look on a Windows device, is sort of represented by, I'm on my local disk and I'm in the users folder and here I am. And so if I were to use the ls command, this would help show all the contents of the folder or working directory that I'm in at the moment. And if I choose to change a directory, let's say if I wants to go into a subfolder here, in this case, my desktop, since it contains the FunWave uh, folder, I can CD change directory into FunWave or into the desktop first. And I can use tab to auto uh, complete. Great. Now I can try to change directory again into FunWave. I use tab to auto complete. And now I'm in the folder. I can use the ls command to see what's inside. There's another folder that I have to go into. And now using the ls command, I can now see everything that's in the folder. Everything that's highlighted here is a folder itself, and these are individual files. Let's go into the simple cases folder. Now, a great example to compile and run to ensure that FunWave is working is Vessel Flatbottom. So we can go into Vessel Flatbottom. And we can take a look on what's inside. Now, if we were to look inside this folder itself within FunWave, I want to bring your attention to two files. One is the make file and one is the input. In this part of the tutorial, you do not have to modify the make file, 
but you should try opening the input.txt file. An important thing to check over here is this section called parallel info. Now this may be computer dependent in terms of what you want to set these values, but all you need to know is that if your computer has, let's say, more than four processors or less than four processors, you may want to change these parameters. In the case that you only have two processors in your computer, I would change the px equals whatever value to two. But since my computer has more than four cores in it, I would keep it to four. How you know how many processors that you have in your computer, you can pull up the task manager. And you can go into the performance tab of task manager. And you can look at the CPU. And it will tell you how many cores or logical processors that you can use. In my case, I think it's best for me to only use the four cores and not try to go using the logical processors. And that's what I'll do. So in this case, I don't really have to change anything from anything inside the input.txt. So I can safely close this. Now let's compile FunWave. Now I see that there's a make file in here. If you have already installed make, you can simply just type in the make command and it should start the compilation process for FunWave. Okay, now that FunWave has finished compiling, we can use the ls command to see what new has popped up in our current folder. As we can see, there's a small build and a new program called FunWave Vessel GNU Parallel Single. This is the program that we can run to simulate the model that is contained within this uh, simple case. Now to do that, we need to use MPI to run it. The command for that will be MPI run. You want to specify the number of processors using the dash MP flag. As we've seen before, it was four. And now we needed to specify the program that we want MPI to run. In this case, we need to do a dot slash to tell MPI that it needs to look within the folder that we're in. And then we can type in the uh, name of the program. In this case, I'm just going to auto complete it by using the tab. And then I can run it. Now, if you see a normal termination, that means Sunwave was set up and installed correctly, and you're done. So this concludes the tutorial, um, and hopefully you found this helpful.